All right, now in the previous video, I talked about trees, what they are, and how we can get from a tree back to a list by using Simplify. Now in this video, I would like to show you how to go the opposite direction, so from a list to a tree. And one of the uh, uses of this is, let's say we create a range of points. So I'm going to use construct point, here we go, and I'm going to have two ranges, one for x and one for, for, one for the y direction. So right now I've got a, I've created a range of values and by default this always goes from 0 to 1 and has got 10 steps so I get 11 values. Right? So I'm now going to do a second range for the y direction where I'm going to have a few less points. So I'm only going to have five steps, meaning that I get six in the other direction. And what has happened now is that Grasshopper internally is trying to match these two lists to each other. So you can see that because they aren't the same length, it is simply repeating the last value in y direction several times. Now if these had the same length, we would have a perfect diagonal. But because I've got only five values in y direction and 11 in x direction, internally it's filling up the missing bits uh, with the last value. And that's simply the default behavior. Now let's say we want to have a grid of points. Now one way to do that is to graft one of these lists. All right, so this is the original list and now I'm going to actually use the graft block to turn this list into a tree. So while originally we have this list with 11 values, we now it's taken every one of those values and put it in its separate branch. So now we've got a tree with 11 branches. So let's go to the param viewer and you can see this here. It will tell us, okay, 11 branches. And if we look at the tree, you can see we've got 11 branches. And if we use this grafted version as an input, we get a grid because what's happening here? Instead of combining one item from here with one item from there and filling up the missing pieces, what is happening um, is it's now got this tree. So, as I mentioned before, Grasshopper operates on every value of the list. So in this case, now I've got one list here and one list here. So I've got one value in x direction and it's going to use, it's going to repeat that so that it's got the same five values so that we get one, two, three, four, five points with the same x value. And then it's going to do the next, uh, the next list in this tree and do it again. So as always, we can also simply go right click and graft instead of using the separate block. You can say we get the same result up here. Now, if I undo that and use the graft in this direction, we get the same thing. Um, only that the, the final tree will look different. So I'm going to connect the param viewer to the end here. And you can see that in this direction, I get five branches and each branch has got 11 entries in it. And if I go the other way, I get 11 branches with five entries. And this is really a quick and dirty way to get a grid of some form of points. All right, another use for the graft is, I'm actually going to, we can hide all of this. And I've prepared a little something up here where I've got two rectangles. Go to perspective. There we go. Got two rectangles above each other. Take one rectangle, moved it up. 
and exploded it to get at the points. Now let's say we want to loft between these two uh, rectangles. So we want to take this rectangle and loft the lines of this rectangle with the lower lines. Now actually I should be able to go loft and simply plug in those two rectangles and it will work. Um, but let's say we don't have these these rectangles or, or closed lines. Instead we've got um, a different form of geometry where we want to connect individual lines with each other. And in this case we would then say okay I'm going to take one from here and one from there. So I'm going to merge these two lists and then use that as an input for my loft. So I'm going to use the segments here and plug them into a loft. And then I get some really, really weird geometry. Because what is happening? Well, I had two lists of curves, line-like curves. Now, if I merge these two, what do I get? I get a single list with eight curves. And the loft command will try to loft through all of these curves. But if I graft it beforehand, what do I get? I get a tree with four branches and there's only one curve in every single branch. So if I do that on both, both of these rectangles, I'll have two trees. Actually, let's put a panel down here and you can see it. So now I've got two trees. Whoops, there we go. Two trees with four branches each. And each of these, at the end of each branch, we've got a list with a single entry. So if we then merge these two trees, it'll merge this with that, this with that. And so now we've got a tree and it's still got four branches, but on each of those branches, I've got a list with two entries and the loft command will take these two lines, loft them, these two lines, loft them. And what we get in the end is we get a tree with four branches and there's a surface in each one. And for example, we could now simplify this, sorry, not simplify, flatten it to get a list of those surfaces. So that's another use of the loft command. And actually, because I did it by accident, uh, let me show you what a simplify does. Simplify simply removes the trunk of that tree, and I already talked about that in last in the last video. Okay, so that's grafting. I would like to show you one more operation in this video, and that is flip, flip matrix. And for that, let us go, actually let's go back to these points. So I'm going to hide all of this and let's go back to our collection of points. So we've got these points and they consist of a tree which has got, in this case now, it's got 11 branches with five entries in each one. So I'm going to get rid of these panels. And so let's take these points and connect them with a polyline. And as you might expect, it connects the, the points in every single uh, list at the end of these branches. But let's say I want to connect them in the other direction. So instead of going, uh, connecting the five points in, in, in the list at the end, I want to connect these, so I want to connect the first point in every of the list and so forth. Well, we can simply flip that tree around. And for that, we've got the flip matrix command. And I'm actually going to put another panel here. Whoops. To, to just illustrate what's happening a little bit better. So right now we've got these 
11 branches, and each of those has got five, five points in their list. If we now take this and use the flip matrix to connect these points here, what happens? Well, look at my panel. You can see that now my individual lists have gotten a lot longer. And if we look at this in the param viewer, you'll see that now instead of 11 branches, we've got five branches with 11 entries. So it's kind of flipped um, the indices around. So if you look at this without the trees, it'll say, okay, 11 branches, and each of those has got five entries in its list, and now I've got five branches with 11 entries. So if I connect this new tree with the polyline, the lines will go in the other direction. And one thing where this is uh, let's let's do another example where this might come in handy. And for that, I'm also going to use the range command a little bit more. So I'm going to start with construct point, and I'm going to plug in a range of values in z direction. And I'm going to have I'm going to construct a domain for that. Construct domain. And I'm going to leave the start on its default value, 0. And I'm just going to change the end value to, I don't know, 25. There we go. Perspective. And now we've got this rising list. And I don't want to have so many points. I actually only want to have three points. So two steps. And now I've got these three points. And I'm going to use these as a center of a circle. So I've got circles, and they're all going to be around the z-axis. Zoom in a little bit. And I want to have them in, with a different radii. So I'm actually going to just copy this range construct. And I need exactly the same amount of value. So I'm going to plug in the same number of steps into both. But in this case, I'm not going to have the domain start at zero. I'm going to have it start at, let's see, 12 and end at 25. And if I plug this into the radii, you can see how that works. And actually, I can flip this around so I can have it start high and then go lower. Now, if I divide these curves, I get these points. And if I use a polyline to connect them, it will connect them in each of these circles. Right? So now I've got, where is it? Here. So now I've got these unclosed polylines on each level. But let's say I want to connect them going vertically. Well, if you look at it, with the param viewer here, I've now got three branches with 10 entries. So if I use a flip matrix, I get exactly 10 branches with three entries. So if I now connect that to the polyline, there you go. So that's just an example of how you can use flip matrix to change kind of the direction of your data structure. And what I also showed you in this video is how to use graft to turn lists into trees or to add another level of branches in a tree. Thank you for watching.